This is my boyhood river. Huckleberry Finn had the Mississippi, I have the Tarrago. This was really normal to me as a kid. A small, not very wide, brown river. I now live just up the road from where I grew up and this is still my river, I suppose you'd say. I've never left this watershed. And now, funnily enough, the roads that I travel to to get to work follow this river. I see it every day. I'm really fascinated by something as mundane as a commute to work. I think it can offer me a whole bunch of adventure. I've already walked to work and I stripped it right back and it was hard and challenging and, and really insightful of me and humanity. Now to extend that idea, why don't I try and paddle to work? I can get to work via the very water that falls on my roof. In doing so, I'm reinventing my idea of adventure. I no longer feel the need to go and paddle great distances down a continent shore or go to the highest peaks. Your carbon footprint goes through the roof just so you can go and find yourself somewhere else. And so I really want to do these things in my backyard now. And why not my boyhood river that I want to reinvent with some adult ideas. And for so much of my life I thought this river was perfectly healthy and normal. And I know that's not the case. That's still an assumption from my point of view because I don't know this river intimately. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paddle the Tarrago, which runs into the Bunyip, which becomes a canal across Western Port, and then up Watson's Creek through the mangroves, and then drag my way to my office. the commute via water. <laughs> you, know, you could set up a base camp with this stuff and live quite comfortably for a year in the bush somewhere. The beauty of this tiny little kayak is that it's not made for touring and so I can only take so much. You know what, I think I'm going to just sleep in my wetsuit. That's the wear. Which is an experiment in itself. Tiny luxuries, that's all I'm after. I can't be cold, I need to have enough calories, I need enough water. Keep it simple man. Easy to take the boy out of the country but hard to take the redhead out of the boy. <laughs> it's the coldest day of the year but I'm still putting on sunscreen. I'll tell you what inspires me, great beauty and great sickness. The thing with good and bad is that it gives you an emotional response, which means it becomes part of you, it becomes part of your worldview. And if you badge yourself as an adventurer, you should find these contrasts. And if I'm honest, I shouldn't have to go far to do this, which is bang for buck because you never care for anything more than your own backyard. It usually takes me about 75 minutes to get to work in my old ute. I estimate this is going to take three or four days. A full tilt adventuring to work. Here's the river. I think it's great that a 35 year old bloke can be feeling what a 10 year old feels after their first night in a tent. You know, I think that's grass. Because I just don't know what's going to happen, which is, um, exactly the whole point to this. I live 2.2 kilometres away. <laughs> All right. Hello cows, I'm not sure you or I should be here. That man wears around tight stuff so he can feel everything. Spatial awareness, man. 
I can feel everything right now in this wetsuit. I keep thinking I see a platypus, so I'm kind of excited about that, but it's just a stick. <laughs> Come on, platypus. Kind of like glacier travel. You're just constantly going from one side of the river bank to the other. So I've been going about uh, an hour from home. I mean, I've probably traveled, I don't know, two and a half kilometers overall and my first lock gate that I can't really get through and it's far more strewn than I thought. Feels quite nice to be on the ground actually. <laughs> Three hours to get here and I would have usually been at work for two hours already. Ten emails, three cups of coffee, two pointless conversations. <laughs> right, I have some bread. I've been thinking about bread, fantasizing about it for the last hour or so. Oh yeah. Damper and banana. What a weird way to get to work. And just when you think the river's starting to clear up, um, you look downstream and she's still pretty clogged. I'm just gonna take the time a bit more and, and, and enjoy it. I've lived here my whole life on this river and I never knew that the little river that I grew up on had both a dam and this cool old building. Well, the flow's getting bigger, but um, the river's not getting any easier. But geez, fun. Not a soul out there, just cows. And different farmer's habits. You go from one block of land to the next block of land and there's different trees, different kinds of fencing. Um, you can sort of almost tell who's the best farmer. Good trees, good cows. I had some really great stuff to tell you, but well, I can't remember. So this river is famous for willows and blackberries, nettles, and all these little stingy, prickly things that aren't supposed to be here that clog the river up. Brought in by the Acclimatisation Society, if you can believe it. 150, 160 years ago, they would plant out species that looked like Europe or the Americas. And I now have a great hatred of those things because they have colonised big time, a bit like us humans. So I'm cutting too much water in this thing, so I'll have an empty out and a banana. Drink of water. Keep going for another few. Boyhood Bo attached his identity to this river. Caught my first fish here, first eel, thinking bloody hell, I've just caught a water snake. It felt like going to my threshold of where I was allowed to go as a young boy. It was the river. It's the reason why people don't paddle, I suppose, because it's unpaddleable. <laughs> right, I'm still having fun. I've, I want to feel worth in my body too, and I'm really, I'm petrified of death. Not dying now, but dying in 50 years without having done stuff. I want to come out here and I want to put myself through the ringer a bit sometimes. Not all the time, I want to sit and drink wine and I appreciate that a lot more when I've pulled a kayak for 35 k through farmland. I'm just constantly critical of what adventure is. You know, I write about it, I teach about it. So it's just a new form of adventure and it's squeezing it into my everyday. It's brilliant. I don't have to buy a thousand dollar plane ticket somewhere. I don't have to annoy a culture somewhere else that doesn't really need annoying. No such thing as a shortcut. So it's 
one foot forward, one foot deep, basically. What a great day. I'm buggered and just for all the right reasons. I was frustrated at the river at times and now I thought, no nah, man, you know, they were, the, they were the good bits. It just served the purpose of an adventure in all the right ways. Muddy, sloppy, unknown. And I just, it's just magic. This is my homeland and I, I've just reinvented it. And what a great day, bloody cracking day. A lot of little fire. Sit down, have some R&R &R and, oh, chilli con calm with damper. So I've been sort of flat out since five this morning, and I probably had, say, 20 minutes break throughout the day. I could be home within eight minutes of here in a car, and, and yet I certainly don't want to be. Got my beans all sorted for tomorrow. I've never worn a wetsuit to bed. I feel like it's a bit weird. You know, like, like skivvies or dating your cousin, you know, it's just not quite right. I gotta say, it feels toasty. Completely against personal hygiene. The skin is saying, what the hell? One dirty dirtbag mosquito is in here. Oh well. The beauty of only having one mosquito in your tent is that they can only take so much. So it's a frost. And I've got to get my wetsuit off, which is the base layer of all my clothes to have a leak. Damn. Breakfast of champions, man. Chilly, yeah, below, below zero. Really still. Actually, you can still hear the highway because of it. But bloody sore after the drag fest of yesterday. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> So yesterday I probably would have done 50 or 60 of these and I'd just marched straight across. But the water's so cold. But yeah, my hand can't take apart the, the paddle. Yeah, I'll just ferry across to the other side, just keep marching along. Uh, keep my hands high to get some, some blood back into them. I'm just trying to navigate through paddock land right next to the river, which is unpaddleable. Anyway, the rest is ice. And my feet, well, they're really cold, but I uh, suppose I can't get any colder. The river's just starting to get a bit more guts, a bit more, uh, well, more water coming into it. Banana stop. I got some good chafe going on. Won't be showing you that. We know that walking is the oldest form of human travel. And then when we started to make things via tools, water ruled, giving us boats to use up and down watersheds, opening up the world like a watermelon. Paddling to work to ponder human transport, it's almost a metaphor for what we're capable of. Driving to work takes 15 minutes to get to this bridge. When I walked to work, it took three hours to get here. And via paddling and dragging, it's 27 hours to this point. I love this comparison. You know, this is the artfulness of adventure, messing with the ingredients via this overlap of everyday life. I'm just, I'm, I'm a really narrow-minded man when I'm in this mode, and it works quite well in that sense. I've compartmentalized my life and it's, it's easy. Maybe it's easier out here, that's why I'm attracted to it. I'm trying to imagine if this river colour is what it's always been. Has it always been this brown and silty? Was it clearer? I don't know. From the middle of a river, in a kayak, this beautiful slippery little craft that I can feel and sense and... I'm really aware of what's going on around me. I imagine if I was to spend the weekend inside someone's gut and I knew what I was looking for, I'd 
be able to see if that person was healthy. And I'm in this river, it's, it's much the same. It's like the digestive tract of this watershed. All the goods and bads end up here. Beach, you sit there and have a picnic, have a bottle of wine with all the weeds. Great idea. All right, from one set of strainers to the next. No visible way through here. Unfenced rivers is just plain bad farming. Not necessarily bad farmers, I'm not digging at them, but shitty old practices that have been done for generations. You know, I'm kind of part of this problem too. I live on a small farm that's mostly cleared and it's, it's lack of native vegetation that has changed the nature of this river. I feel like I'm earning my opinion, sliming about with a kike in a wetsuit. It's bloody intimate. I'm taking in every inch of this river, and it's it's full on. Okay, tuna and beans. Almost lost them in that last portage. My hands are all fat and swollen, just from um, days of being cold and wet. Look at it, it's just, it's like jail. Put, put the big bloody retention center over here for all our dirt bags, I'll never get out. You get, you get a bit fractious too when you're a bit underdone for food. It's kind of a timeless river in some way because I'm in a deep groove now and life beyond the banks above doesn't really exist. All I'm doing is looking for a line down the middle of the river. It's actually very rarely down the middle either. You're always going from one side to the other looking for a hole in the trees. Trying not to get a blackberry in your ear or your eye. Ooh, that's what happened to the first bloke who tried it. Look at that, that's a full kayak. Wow. Cool. I'm talking about this river. It's a bit of a mix of both. It's bigger, it's fatter, it's stronger. I don't know. Maybe it's just the day two funk. I'm pretty tired. Tide is starting to kick in. Yeah, I'm cold, my feet are cold. I'm, my, yeah, I'm, my core's starting to drop, so. Pull up stumps, that's, that's a work day. I knew that it would take well over a day to get to where I'm standing, but I didn't think it would take almost two full days to get here, so. You can see the steel flex. You see the steel flex. I'm not sleeping there. <laughs> no way. It's cool to see all this in between. And it's cold. You don't get that in a car, you just crank the heat up. It's kind of scary, isn't it? I hopped a train once, one of the best things I've ever done. Amazing how you get really used to the train too. It became, at the start it was like a shocking wave that goes through and then you almost wait for it subconsciously. I've always been annoyed at adventurous types that whinge about what they're doing. You know, they find themselves in a difficult situation and they grizzle about it. They've made the choice to be there. 
Don't complain, dude or dudette. Get on with it and milk it for all the good stuff. I have to remind myself of such things on trips like this. So it's easy to catch yourself getting pissed off with where you find yourself. You're witnessing river sickness, thinking, geez, we're killing off the very thing that gives us life. It's just not a river, it's a ditch. Man-made, the woman wouldn't have done anything so stupid. Man-made canal full of willows and blackberries. If you ever wanted to give someone punishment, tell them to go down that for a day. Bloody purgatory. And just horrible. Um, I mean, the adventure stuff aside, it just shouldn't really be like that, you know? I've lost my voice from just swearing at the world. I was having a cranky time coming down there. I'd rather be sitting at my desk in my box. <laughs> nah, that's not quite true. It's just rock races now and the odd little strainer. Constantly in and out. They keep dumping the boats. I get taking on water with all these little rock races they're put in. They don't have my skirt on. Doing this kind of stuff must be like childbirth in that you forget very quickly the badness of it, or the pain, or the, I don't know, the turmoil, the hardship. Because when it's good, like that last couple of Ks, life's okay again. I've already, I've already forgotten about the morning. My commute is a particular line between home and work. I see the seasons come and go as I go through farmlands, watch people's gardens, Watch it when trees fall over and new houses get built. If I'm to take a different road, all of those experiences, all those observations change. You know, comparing that line to the line I'm now creating across water, they're much the same in that they're both just full of experiences. I did see a few people look at me funny today, which was nice. They saw the uh, little red kayak floating down a bit of river in front of them. And maybe I'm a little part of their commute today. Ah, saw bum. Not made for really touring, the little fella. This might very well be the world's best donut van. That was awesome. And I'm offsetting it with an apple. Real good apple. Imagine if there were just donut and apple vans all the way along the river. This would become a tourist attraction. Anyway, I can see the sea. It's right there. So within, I don't know, 200 paddle strokes, I'm going to be in, in the sea, salt water. It'll go from a brown ditch of brackish water, this bit anyway, into a big green and blue expanse. Remarkable. That's quite a nice thing, just drifting around and watching where you've come from. If you had a look at a map from above, you know, and that's what our lives become. We become this squiggle of lines or straight lines. The trail behind us as we travel through life. The more we use mechanised transport, the more they are straight. And the more you do this sort of stuff, the more they're squiggly lines. Or in circles, like just now, you know. I suppose the thing with the commute is that we often lock ourselves into not observing anymore because it is so normal and habitualised and it's not exotic. I've never taken three or four days to get to work before and <laughs> see the views changed. Bloody oath. You need to have some small wins along the way to think, oh, what's all this bother for? I'm sitting here three full days into getting to work which at this point usually takes me 40 minutes. So I constantly have to justify it. <sighs> you know, we're so human, we always want answers. Bo, what are you really doing out there? Maybe we just do it because it, it feels different or we haven't done it before. I can't go away for three or six months anymore to go and paddle down the coast of a continent, so I'll try and find these little pockets of Bo in my daily commute. I bloody did today too, I tell you. I had a love and hate relationship with today. The first half sucked and the second half was amazing. Made it worthwhile.
This was through to its skin last night, all raw. It smells very seaweedy, which is nice. It's gone from the smell of cow shit to sea smells. Almost close enough to ding. I don't know whether these channel markers are incredibly invasive or incredibly pretty. Of course they're both, right? You know, they're basically art. I mean, yes, they serve the purpose as a channel marker. <laughs> Just past a big, big stingray. Nice. Just cruising the waters, hunting. Playing the game of tides. Just wait for this water for half an hour and that'll probably shave 45 minutes off going around this channel. So I can cut straight across. You could probably count the amount of people that have sat here like this on your hand. The complexity of land, having all of these, you know, fingers of humanity kind of ruining things in a sense. Making rivers into drains, and then once it's a drain, putting pipes and pumps into it. Biodiversity is gone by this stage. Now it is just a utility of water, which is more turbid, We've got more sediment in it, and a whole lot less life. Anyway, you don't see that out here. I suppose that's why real estate at the coast is so much more expensive because you, your problems seem to vanish when you're out here on this big expanse of water. What in the heck are you sitting out there for, mate? Don't know. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself enough. A bit more depth, a couple of feet, three foot, four foot, good fish territory. Oh, big mozzie, look at the size of you. I could eat you. Proof that we're not too far from land. You do not get mozzies out at sea. But sorry fella, I'm just all neoprene. If you can get some blood out of me, good luck. That's it for main water, really. The rest is just a little creek. And most of it unpaddleable. In fact, I think everything from this point on is, is a drag. A little, a little moment to myself, sitting there having my banana jammed in bread. And by golly, it was good. And so, can't paddle Watson's Creek. Never really thought I could. But I was hoping to kind of enjoy this company as I had to work. I couldn't get through that last section just because of, of stinging nettle. I don't mind that it's not paddleable, no problem. But it's just buggered. It's a sick little creek. I have no idea how I'm gonna get through all these fences. It is fence and private property bonanza between here and work. So it's a little exciting. This is the this is the regular commute fuel stop. And so we're always getting coffees here and sticks of chewing gum or a pie every now and again. Our coffee is hot. It's good. 
Whew, burn. I want to down it so I can keep commuting. It's like the melting pot of society, aren't they? Um, petrol stations. People are talking about the same stuff. Oh, which, which barrels are you? Oh, I don't know. The, the blue car over there. Well, what number's that? Oh, I don't know. If you wake up one morning and think, you know what? Today I'm not taking the car. I'm going to use my body. You're about to highlight the scale of your commute. I love work because it's not really work. And I really like living in the country. And I don't mind commuting. Or listening to the radio and sipping tea. But commuting is still just a place of transit if that's all I think of it as. Pushing and pulling myself through a place that's usually a blur in my window has reinvented this place I thought I knew. I'm really happy I made the decision to push through tonight. It just feels a bit more raw and a bit more, oh, it feels unique. I never come to work at six o'clock at night. You can soak in the car lights of, of people heading home and be thoughtful about other things because I'm not going to work for work now. I'm going to work because it means something. The day after this experience, I tried to give blood and was refused. I was sent home by the nurses because my vital signs were half dead. Yet I felt brilliant, which is often the point for us adventure types, you know, half killing yourself in order to feel alive. Just awesome. The full spectrum of adventure and all between the lands of home and work. A four-day adventure is not all that long, but a four-day commute is. You meld them together, adventure commuting is a hell of a combination. I actually didn't know it then, but this sick and sometimes beautiful paddle to work has inspired every trip I've done since. It was the hardest, most insightful four days of adventuring I've ever done. I'm a bit late. <laughs> four days. Well, no, three. That's... Yeah, I left home four days ago or four mornings ago. I don't know what you'd say, yeah. such an office faux pas to drink out of the thing, so I'm just going to go over it. It's after hours, you know, I've clocked off.